In this part we want to define what serious parallel graphs are. For that we want to employ a recursive definition. First of all, a single directed edge is a serious parallel graph. That's the easiest one, the simplest one that you can find. Then, if we have two serious parallel graphs G1 and G2, and both have a single source and a single sink, then we can combine those to another serious parallel graph. For that we have two options. The first is the serious composition. That means that from one of them we take the sink and from the other one we take the source and we identify those two vertices. Then we get the following graph. The second option is, as the name series parallel says, a parallel composition. For that, we identify both the sinks and both the sources with each other. And that gives us a graph that looks like this. So from two series parallel graphs, we can get two larger series parallel graphs. These graphs clearly are planar. I won't prove that here. I'm sure you can figure out yourself how to prove that those graphs are planar. You just have to go through these compositions and then figure out if you have a planar drawing of both, how to get a planar drawing of the composed graph. This recursive definition naturally gives us a way to decompose these series parallel graphs. So since the whole lecture is based on divide and conquer principles, if I look at the series parallel graphs, a good strategy is to just divide it into these two components, draw them, and then compose them back with a series or a parallel decomposition. From those different types of compositions, we can build a so-called decomposition tree, following which we can go back through edges and then go back up to the whole series parallel graphs. Such a decomposition tree has three types of nodes. S, P, and Q types. A Q node is just a single edge, those are the leaves of our decomposition tree. An S node represents a serious composition. It has two children, T1 and T2, and the left child represents the graph G1, that's here at the bottom, and the right child represents graph G2, which is here at the top. And a P node represents a parallel composition. It has two children, they represent the graphs G1 and G2, who we merge together here to form the larger graph. This decomposition tree is what you usually use when you want to prove something for serious parallel graphs. This is a very simple decomposition tree. All graphs, however, have some kind of decomposition trees. Those are usually much more complex and much more involved. And depending on the type of graphs, you can have different types of trees. One of the most general forms is the so-called tree width decomposition. That's not something we will do in this lecture, but we will focus on this here and later on so-called SPQR trees, which are an extension of this. But for now, we just stay with SPQ trees and we will have a look at an example. We have our serious parallel graph here and we want to build the SPQ trees. So first, what can we do here? What kind of composition has been used? Well, I would look at the source here and the sink here, and with a parallel composition, I can split it into the left tree and the right tree. And now I want you to continue. Try to build the whole decomposition tree for yourself before you continue with the video. Okay, I'm sure you made it, but for sake of completeness, let's do it together again. Here on the left, we can do a parallel composition into the left and the right subtree. Both subtrees we get are just paths of length 2, which we get with a serious composition of single edges. So we're done with the left subtree of here. Let's move on to the right. We cannot do something parallel, but we have two different ways to do a serious composition. I chose this one first, which gives us an edge, another graph where we have to do a serious composition, and this again gives us an edge and the same graph as we had here. So we can use exactly the same rules as we used in the subtree here to get an isomorphic one. And this is a whole SPQ tree for this serious parallel graph. And while these serious parallel graphs look kind of constructed, they are actually quite frequently used. First of all, for proofs, 
You usually start with trees because they are some of the easiest graph classes and then you go on to serious parallel graphs because they are a natural extension of them where you don't have too many more edges. But also in practice, for example, for flowcharts, those are usually serious parallel graphs or diagrams for program evaluation. The computational complexity of this graph class is interesting too. There are many NP-hard problems, like for example maximum matching, maximum independent set and Hamiltonian completion, that have linear time algorithms on serious parallel graphs. And this is a whole field of uh, research, where you have a look at NP-hard problems on specific graph classes and try to figure out if these specific graph classes admit polynomial time algorithms. So while the problem is hard in general, on this specific graph class we can solve it efficiently. And in the final part of the lecture, we want to get our drawing algorithm for serious parallel graphs, based on the serious parallel decomposition.